Hello everyone, welcome to Scholar Head Master Class. So now we are live. So today master class is very interesting. It's all about how to get a job into the product based company. I'm sure many people are interested to get a job in the product based company like we have been Microsoft. We have been, let's say Meta. We have been Amazon and many more. So of course, when it is coming to the product based companies into the product based company, they ask mostly data structures over there. So you should have the better understanding about the data structures. They look for the people who are good in the problem solving skills. They look for the people who can implement the various data structures in the real life. So this master class is around that. And guys, if you are coming to the YouTube channel or LinkedIn first time, I request you to everyone, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon so that the information about such valuable master classes you will get. So today we have been Mr. Amit Kumar Ghosh. He is a mentor. His core expertise is in DSA and he helping the many students and many working professional to get into the job into the product based company. So Amit, over to you. So hello, good evening and good morning, whatever time you are in in the time frame. So good morning, uh, good evening, sir. So today we're going to see about data structures and you know how to join to our. If I am I audible correctly, sir? Yeah, you are audible. You can. Okay. Go okay. So uh, today we're going to see some hands hands on things on you know data structures algorithm. So we'll learn, try to understand, you know, big O notations, arrays, insertion, deletion, stack, searching algorithms. How, how does Google, you know, use this stuff and what are the, you know, things there in the data structure algorithm? We're going to see everything one by one. So initially we'll be starting with, you know, uh, just uh, theory, then we'll go to the practical fully. So. I'll be helping you. I will be your mentor. So I'll be helping you guys to crack product based companies like Fang, like Facebook, Amazon, whatever companies are there. So data structures are the main pillars of every, you know, company. So we're going to learn today that thing. So should I start, sir? Should I share my screen and start with it? Yeah, please. You can share the screen. Okay. And one more thing, guys, what other queries you will have, you can keep asking through the chat window. It's available to you. And please take the notes in between so that whatever the learning you have been from this today session, you have in your written format. Because what I believe, if you're not taking the notes, then there is no learning from that session because soon you will forget everything. If my screen is visible, I can go forward with it. My screen is visible, right, sir? Oh, yeah, we can see your screen. Please start. Okay. Okay, so today's our topic is going to be, you know, DSA and big O notations and everything. So first thing, you know, what are the agendas where there? You can see that we'll start with data structure, what a data structure, linear data structure, non-linear data structure, you know, common data structure and operations, abstract data types. Then we'll jump to big O notations. We, we're going to see lots of things on big O notations. Then problem solving techniques. We're going to do uh, with arrays. We're going to do with stack. We're going to play with some, you know, linear data, uh, linear search, binary search. How does, you know, searching algorithm works? We may see like if you have time, time, we'll see sorting everything we're going to 
go forward with it okay so about myself you know myself amit kumar ghosh i am you know working right now in a usa based company that is on blockchain so in blockchain industry i do work and by side i am a mentor i do teach people and i help people to get their like to product based companies so and i am also working as a you know ceo for a web3 media company that is also there based in france so i am working there also so i'll be teaching you guys everything we going to like everything we going to go from very basics very you know low level to and we'll understand each and everything working of everything all right so moving forward so we'll be using visual studio code today will be uh, if you uh, Abhi, like... sir, i'm sorry to interrupt can you start the ppt in the presentation mode okay sure if it is good now sir run it there is option to run in the bottom I'm saying the slide show. It it it's not whatever, visible. Whatever the option you were using before, that was fine. Share the complete screen. Can you share the complete screen? Sure, I can share the complete screen. Yes. Now and go to the right hand section. Just below the logo, there should be a button to play. can you make this uh no the zoom toolbar just make to the top just click on this zoom toolbar at the top level yes i'll talk now about here okay should i approve it yeah yeah please Okay. Yeah. Should I go forward? Yeah, please go ahead. All right. So starting with you know, uh, this is going to be our agendas and everything. So I already talked about that. So I'll move forward next. So I told about myself also that. Okay. So what we'll be using is we'll be using you know Visual Studio Code. So if you have like you can run this a uh, Java program on your Visual Studio Code, you can install JDK and some extensions are there. And if you set up like it will not take five more than five minutes, you can set up and that will like everything will be done. All right. So what is data structure? If I talk, you know, data structures. are nothing just organizing and storing data in memory so when we talk like suppose i'll take example you know if you go to like you know every college or school have libraries right and if mathematics books science books coding books all are mixed together in that library so it's very difficult to find for a librarian if i go and ask for a book any name book so what does librarian do is you know they index the book you know according to the column or whatever so that is what a, like any like you can call it data structure because they are structuring the books accordingly right similarly it happens with the data also if you don't structure it if you don't sort it and if you want to access that data that would be very very difficult right so that's why the need of data structure that's why the google is very famous that's why you know all this whatever companies they are you know big companies are there that's why they are famous all right so if you talk you know there are two types of data structures you know linear data structure is there non linear data structure is there so i'll just you know fast forward it you might all might already know we'll just jump to the you know uh, coding part before that i'll talk about you know big o notations and all the stuffs so then after that we'll jump all right so when we say you know data structure so there you know anything happened sir
All right. So uh, when you talk about data structures, so there, you know, linear data structure, non-linear data structures come into the play. So when I say linear data structures, it means those linear data structures are those data structures where, you know, one node is connected to one. So that is what linear data structure is. So we'll see, you know, arrays, stacks, queues, linked lists. So these are all the data structures and their use are very, very different. So when we take not talk about non-linear data structures, that is trees and graphs, there, you know, more than one node can be connected. So that is what non-linear data structure is. All right. So we'll learn that thing also. So linear data structure, I already talked about that, you know, arrange the elements in a sequential or linear fashion. It means one node is connected to one node only. So that is what linear data structure is. So when I talk about linear data structure, then you can further divide into two parts. That is static data structure and dynamic data structure. So you can call array as a static data structure. It means it's if I declare array in statically, so that memory size is going to be fixed. It means you cannot change the size of that array in the runtime. It means when you are running the code, that time you cannot change the size of the array. Similarly, dynamic data structure are there. So you can change the size of that, you know, data structure in the runtime. So linked list is there. That is dynamic data structure. So linked list is there. Trees are there, you know, queues, stacks, hash tables, you name it, all those data structures, you can change the size, you know, memory size in a runtime environment. All right. Moving forward next, that is non-linear data structures. We already talked about non-linear data structures in which trees and graphs, tables, these are the non-linear data structure. Okay, I'll try to take, you know, I'll try to show you thing, what I mean by this, I'll try to, you know, all right. So where were we? We were in the non-linear data structure. Okay. I'll try to show you what I mean by this non-linear data structure. So if I take pointer, so non-linear data structure is means, suppose this is one node is there. All right. So this node will be connected to multiple nodes. So that is non-linear. So in case of array, what happens is, so array, suppose let's say this is defined this way. All right. So this is continuous memory location. We're going to see that insertion deletion in an array. So it's zero, zero index one, two, three, four. So here, what happens this, if I call this as a node, this is the first node. It is connected to only one node only. So this is linear data structure. When I say non-linear data structure, it means this one node will be connected to more than one node. So you can see two nodes are connected. It can be three nodes. So you can see this kind of structures in trees in graphs. So there, when more than one node is connected, that is what nonlinear data structure is. All right. I'll just remove the things and move to the next part. That was nonlinear data structure. Okay. So what are the advantages of, you know, data structure and algorithm? So data structure algorithm is language independent so today we're going to learn with java but you can learn with javascript c plus plus c sharp any language you can choose and because data structure is nothing this is just logic building and stuff nothing is that right so it's language independent you can understand improve logic building improve problem solving approach so you can solve real world problems and you could do optimization of the code. So that will, you know, cater what that will, you know, reduce the cost of the company. How to re how it's reduced the cost cost of the company. So two things we're going to take care every time. So whenever we learn data structure and algorithm, two things will take care. First thing is we're going to take care is, you know, time complexity. And second thing we're going to learn that is, you know, space complexity. So whatever companies are there in the world, all right, name any company right now, uh, .NET tricks or, you know, Google or any companies there, 
So those two companies want to reduce their cost, their server cost and whatever. So they want, you know, high tech code and they want to reduce the cost. Suppose Google search engine is there, right? So many lines of code would have been written there. So, you know, you are searching something that, you know, DSA, suppose you're searching on the Google DSA and some process is happening and it is giving some results outputs to you, right? Pages like websites, website one, two, three, whatever relevant is there. Here, billions of lines of, you know, websites are there out of which Google finds that particular relevant whatever you searched right it try to find that way so you can understand if you search dsa and that take you know 20 30 minutes to search so you would jump out of that you know search engine and you will try to find other alternatives of google right but that's not the case it means you can understand how they are maintaining the code bases and everything so it's very important to learn this thing. So this is all we're going to learn, you know, how this is done, how linear. So today you're going to do that. Today we're going to search that thing. So we're going to do with, we're going to see linear search also. We're going to see binary search also. We're going to see sorting also. So we're going to see how to store elements in an array also. We're going to see that thing also. So everything we will do, so we'll try to, you know, relate with the real world. What is there? We're going to try to do with that all right moving to next so what are the common data you know data structure operations are there so you could do insertion you could do deletion searching sorting so today we're going to see everything insertion we're going to see deletion also we're going to see searching we're going to see sorting see traversals and these things operations we're going to see all these things we're going to see now talk about abstract data types so what are abstract data types are, you know, abstract data is a high level concept used in computer science to describe a collection of data and operation. So th that is what abstract data types is. And it can be performed on the data. So, you know, abstract data types provide a way to encapsulate data, you know, operation to create a modular and usable code. That is what the abstract data type is for. So now we before that we talked about you know data structure now next thing comes to our mind is what is algorithm then okay so algorithms are nothing those those are the you know procedures to make something so if i say you know very common example if your mother would say that you know make a cup of tea so there are definite steps right to that do the you know process right you will take you know milk you will take sugar you will take tea leaves and all the stuff so after that you will be you know giving one by one so that is what algorithm is it more algorithms are nothing but step by step procedures all right so algorithms second thing is algorithm can be wrong algorithm can be correct also you know both will be called as algorithm okay so two things like will basically judge an algorithm like whether the algorithm is you know efficient or not and it is effective or not so if if you're you know someone is doing some task in lots of many steps it means they are taking more time and they're going to take more space also so that will increase the cost of the company remember one thing every company wants to reduce their cost that's why they want to they want to have you know optimized code so that will take less time and it will take less space right so that is what algorithm is so you know algorithm taking minimum steps to produce a desired result is considered to be most effective and vice versa so that is what algorithm is okay if i say you guys that write an algorithm to add numbers so if i would have said this thing like in mathematics, so you could have told that I'll take one number, I'll take second number, I'll both add them and we'll print it. But when I talk about computer programming, but computer programming don't understand those English language, right? So that's why we have to write in their language. So every, so one thing to clear first, that computer don't understand this A and N. This algorithm is written. No computer doesn't understand that. 
computer right now is decoding that computer understand only electrical signals that is zeros and ones off and on computer understand that only so accordingly you know this written forms are done now coming to this algorithm for adding two numbers right all right so when i say that try to explain to the compiler that how we will go forward with the code and what we will write so what we will do is let's say step one is we're going to start we're going to write start second step we're going to do if you have basic knowledge of you know programming so you you'd know that very what does variables means and what does this stops right so we'll take three variables that number one number two and sum so number one and number two will read those values and will store it in sum that is what we're going to do in the mathematics also we do the same thing but that is understandable you know we don't we store in our memory but here we have to give some space you know that variable is what in a computer that is that is memory you can say it memory so when you store want to store one value that is you are still going to store in variables when you want to store multiple values you either you're going to use data structures like arrays linked list or the uh, you know trees all those data structures you're going to use so what is the step for you going to use that add the value of num1 and num2 and assign the result to the sum so that is what we're going to do right so this is what assign this equals to sign is not equals to operator this in programming this is assignment operator all right so num1 plus num2 is added then these two are added first then it is assigned to some variable it means what is happening so in the ram what what is happening is in the ram suppose let's suppose this is a ram and it it is divided into three parts so we're going to understand these things very in very detail so this is going to be stack where you know statically memory gets allocated this is going to be heap and here you know global variables and all this this is the memory structure of a ram right so these are static variables like this is static declaration the sum you call it num num one num two this all are static declaration so all the variables is going to be stored in the stack so all the variables is going to be stored in the stack this is whole is called ram so you your laptop has a ram your mobile has ram and all those things right so those ram is divided into three parts this is the memory structure of that ram so in stack will store the statically statically declared memory and in heap we are going to you know allocate those memory which are dynamically created so we are going to learn that thing also you know what how dynamically we create you know memory and how that is allocated in the heap so that will understand so either you create normal variables you know pointers all are static memory allocation static memory allocation means it cannot be changed in the runtime right so that is what static memory allocation is so those all are stored in the stack all right so let's move forward now this is what you know adding two numbers we are doing the steps right so at the last we'll just print out the sum value what is it is stored right so here we are taking three variables num1 num2 and sum and we are just storing it in the you know sum variable right and at the last we are over with our task and we'll stop it so that is what you know algorithm for adding two numbers all right now when we say algorithm analysis i already talked two things like whenever wherever you go which company you ever you go you know there only people will talking about two things that is time complexity and space complexity how much time that code took and how much space that you know code is taking so those are the two concern things because these two things only determine the you know how much they going to spend like how much that company is going to spend right if it takes lots of space so that's an issue because it will take you know server cost will be very high if it is taking lots of time so that means that is not efficient and user will not stick to that product 
if google search you know if you're searching something and it is taking 5 minutes to search that so you would jump to another you know platform right so that is what you know we're going to see all right so when we say algorithm analysis so we're going to see you know how what are the uh, types of algorithm analysis are there you know and we're going to learn one by one so we're going to learn about uh, you know o of n o of log n o of log n log n what are those means you know omega complexity how to how to determine that stuff we're going to see everything all right so three things is there you know worst case is there best case is there and average case is there so uh, worst case means it is going to take you know execute maximum time you know so that, uh, that that is the worst case it means your code is not your it's just working you know it is not optimized and best case is it is very very optimized all right moving forward now when you talk you know asymptotic analysis so this is all about asymptotic analysis it means worst case base case and average case uh, you know average case is there for a code right so if you move forward again we denote this you know if, if the code is best or not we understand by asymptotic notations so big o notations are there omega notations are there and you know theta notations are there so we're going to use this notations to determine whether the code is what is the you know you know what is the code algorithm you know is it worst case is the best case what is the quality of that code right so we want to learn about so generally you can do with omega notations also you know theta notations also but we'll move forward with a big o notation we say is big o that is capital o right so you know if you go forward you know um, to measure you know water you use liter right so to measure you know code quality we use this notations basically you can understand that analogy all right okay now moving forward you know big o notations so there are various notations are there you know o of one complexity o of log n complexity you know these are nothing these are just graphs so we're going to understand those things one by one you know how these graphs and all the stuff so the, you know big o o of one means it's going to take constant time so o of log n it's going to be logarithmic graph will be there so you have learned in mathematics right so this n means what it is going to be linear so we're going to understand each and everything one by one and then we'll take one one examples for that so it is already taken so you know you, you can see here if i say o of one it means this graph you can see this graph it's you know constant it is constant for like it uh, you your input as you're giving input it doesn't matter at all whatever inputs you give time complexity is going to be constant throughout so when you say logarithmic so it's going to be printed you know you know logarithmic graph when it is linear it is going to be o of n then when it's going to be you know linear arithmetic you know linear and logarithmic will be there so this is going to be used and when it's going to be polynomial you know uh, n square maybe you know square of times so that is quadratic you already know right and cubic so that is the graph is going to be used it means with input it is going to take lots of time so you know this is the best case if you understand o of 1 you know with input it doesn't matter at all so this is the best case so we're going to understand you know we're going to take one one example for this you know so you'll understand better with it all right let's move forward okay so when i say o of one complexity it means it's running in constant time so if i take you know one array if you have understanding you know if you take array okay i have taken the example so you if you see here we declared an array and array name is number all right so if you have basic understanding of how to create how to declare and initialize an array so you'll understand this so this number is the array name all right and that array is initialized with some values in it i'll change the color for you guys so it is visible better so we put some values here and we are just printing out that so it doesn't matter 
in an array it doesn't matter whichever you element you want to access you can access directly by index number so here we are accessing the one index what is the one thing uh, one index is it 10 no so array index start from zero so this is the zeroth index this is the one this is two this is three so whenever i say system dot out print ln number one so it is going to be printing 20. if i change the value to zero that is going to print 10. if i change value to two that is going to print 30. if i change value to three that is going to print 40. so it doesn't matter at all accessing elements in an array doesn't matter so what is the complexity for that that is the complexity is o of one so o of one o of two o of three o of four it doesn't matter at all so it is giving constant output if you see one 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 right so what is going to happen it's going to print like this graph right so this is what you know o of one complexity all right let's move forward one by one we're going to see okay now we're going to talk about log n so when you want to create log n you know for that let's say we declared one variable here we declared one variable and that variable is n now we run a for loop so this is the initialization this is the condition of that for loop and this is the updation we are doing so how we are updating we are updating in log logarithmic form so if you see i equals to i into 10 it means as i changes this i value increases you know very much right so that is if you draw this if you say you know n is starting point point is you know at the last point is 10 so i is going to start from 1 so 1 into i is going to be firstly 10 right after that it will go into this you know again this for loop because i is going to Hello everyone. So don't worry, there is some, you know, the connection issue. Please hold on for a while. Uh, as the missor will come, we will resume. Meanwhile, if you have any query, any doubt, please do ask. I will try to answer the things, whatever you have. So I think many people ask the question here in the chat. Uh, can we use Python? So as I said here, DSA can be implemented by any programming language. We don't have any dependency on a particular programming language. So whether you know C++, C Sharp, Java, Python, any language can be used to write the code to implement the DSA things over there. So we don't have any such dependency. okay so i had i had an issue with my connection so i lost my connection all right you are not an issue you can now restart the things mm -hmm. yeah. all right my screen is shared right sir yeah, it is loading.
Chadar Pasha, soon we are going to release a course on DSSL PACE. It is in development. We will going to release it soon. Pradeep, for the DSA theory, we already writing a series on articles on the DSA. If you will open the scholarhead.com. So there we having the DSA series. We already writing. Even we are writing, we completed recently the series on Java language or on, on, on the Python. So that series we are completing there. So if you're willing to explore what are the various things we have in, it's available here. So this is a link from where you can explore all the things about Java, all the things about Python, all the thing about the DSA, all the things we are putting over there. Yeah, soon we will do a series on DSA with C sharp as well. Don't worry about that. Everything in pipeline. Hopefully in a couple of months we will release it. Now we can start, Amit sir. Okay, sure, sure. I'm audible, right, sir? Yeah, you are audible. Okay, so where were we? We were in the logarithmic, you know, time complexity, right? So here, what we saw that you know, uh, whatever i is changing. So you might have seen, you know, that you might have seen that i plus plus. You might have seen that, right? What does that mean, basically? I plus plus is means we are updating i by incrementing by one. So that is what i plus plus means. So that is increasing linearly, right? But if you see i equals to i into 10, so that is getting, you know, values getting increased, you know, very suddenly. And after that, some point of time, it is getting, you know, in flat. So that is what, you know, logarithmic log n chart, you know, that graph is. So that is what we saw in the graph also. All right. Now let's move forward. We'll try to complete this as fast as possible. So because whenever I, you know, take the examples there, I teach this logarithmic, you know, whatever the, you know, asymptotic notation and everything is there we take there so i will just try to complete these things first so you you can understand when i say o of n it means it is a linear chart you can see so if you see the graph is constant with time so if i take one let's say here what, what is the example we are taking here we have taken a number variable and that's a you know array name basically that variable is storing multiple numbers you can see right so what it, what it is doing is it is storing multiple numbers. All right. So now this is the initialization of that. From where we are starting? We are starting from zeroth index. So zero, one, two, three. It's written. So number dot length. What is the length of this array? That is four. Basically, four is written here. And i plus plus. I plus plus means i equals to i plus one. Right. So you can see it is increasing. I equals to i plus. So I is starting from zero. So firstly, I will be zero because when I write zero plus one, that is be sorry, not zero. Basically, it will be what? I will be zero plus one. So zero plus one will be there. So this is in the first iteration. In the second iteration, what will happen? I will be updated to one. Now, one plus one will be happening because one in from the previous this one we are inputting it we are writing i equals to i plus one basically right next thing we are going to be going to write two plus one because this one plus one two will two because one so you can see this is one this is two this is three and so on four four five so that is what if you draw the graph that will be you know linear graph will be coming so from this code, you can see that it's a linear graph is there. So this is about this is all about the complexity of linear time complexity. All right, let's move forward. So when we say linear rhythmic runtime complexity, so when we say we already saw that n linear and logarithmic. So when we 
apply both things together that is what linear rhythmic runtime complexity that is o of n log n so you can see this complexity in whenever we talk about merge sort you know quick sort heap sort so there it's the you know this you know thing comes there all right so this is what linear rhythmic complexity is all right basically what is happening here you can see this two for loops are running first for loop is going till n right so it will take first for loop is going till n so this will take o of n right now in the second loop you can see this is kind of logarithmic isn't it so it will take log n so when we multiply both it will give n log n so o of n log n it will give so you can see this example in merge sort in heap sort quick sort there we can see we we'll understand that things okay because our course is very hugely you know it's very comprehensively defined for a beginners level and who want to switch to uh, you know sd whatever program so they want to do so they can also do that all right okay moving forward next now we'll talk about polynomial runtime complexity so this happens basically you know it means of you can say quadratic so right now if we see here it is working as you know polynomial you know runtime complexity because first one is running till n second one is running till i so here you, if you see n to the power c so here it's quadratic it's 2 you know n square basically so this is the complexity of that you know n square all right similarly you know exponential runtime complexity is there it's very you know if i take this recursion because recursion take lots of memory you know so uh, you know this is finding fibonacci of number we have defined that fibonacci you know functions that this is the okay you have if you have basic understanding this is the base case right when because we know the fibonacci of one and zero right that is zero and one right we already know that so this is the base case for that if you have basic if you don't understand also that is completely fine because we're going to learn these things one by one all right and this is what recursion two call recursion call with the different parameter n minus one n minus two here actually n is the parameter we are adding and we are calling this function again and again so that will give the exponential runtime complexity right so if it will take you know lots of time as the input increases all right let's complete this as fast as possible then we'll jump to you know how to do insertion in an array deletion in an array and all those stuff so next step thing up is going to be you know factorial runtime complexity so if you see if you want to calculate the factorial sum number so that is going to take you know you're going to pass it to the for loop that factorial of and you're going to pass that function so what will happen basically you know it is going to take you know lots of you know time for that right as input increases the time will also increase right so the you know traveling salesman problem is there you know with the brute force there we use basically so we want to reduce the time complexity every time you have to remember if you have you have to keep this in mind every time that will reduce the time complexity all right then we have multiple time complexity adding to you know different different is there so those things are also there so these things we have studied o of one you know this okay we'll just try to complete uh in a fast as possible that you know accessing element from an array that is o of one because that will not take any time linear search in linear this is going to see today today we're going to see binary search we're going to see o of log n these things we're going to see okay selection sort we're going to see n square this complexity we're going to see this is we're going to see this we're going to see this we're going to see this we're going to see all right and rest are also there so as we move forward hip sort is there much sort is there everything we're going to understand each line so what will jump into the basics of everything and will move to the you know advanced concepts all right now moving forward with that okay so there are various different techniques are there so we're going to use everything all the techniques one by one you know dynamic programming approach is there greedy algorithm two pointers sliding windows 
binary search and everything or lots of other things are there so we're going to jump to the you know different part and we're going to understand one by one all right so this is the ending of you know one first slide for us now we're going to jump to the next that is what you know various data structures all right so what are the various data structures we're going to learn about so we're going to learn about arrays linked list stack queues and each and everything is there so we're going to learn all you know one by one first we're going to start with arrays then linked list then you know stacks queues we're going to learn one by one each thing all right let's talk about arrays first so when we talk array array is the very simplest data structure to understand right so array is a data structure that is very much you know very basic data structure so what is the definition of an array first thing we'll talk about so if you have seen that we do few operations right insertion deletion searching already talked about right insertion deletion searching sorting and all those operations so for an array we're going to do insertion and deletion then when we learn the searching algorithm that binary search and linear search then we're going to do the searching then when we're going to jump to the sorting algorithm we're going to do that time sorting right all right let's understand this what is the basic definition of array so if you have missed something you know i'll just cover right now so array is a data structure this is a very normal data structure that is going to store n number of elements so what what, what i mean by that array is a data structure so here you see array it's this is an array okay if i write int a equals to 10 what does that mean it means a is a variable that is integer type that is storing value 10 right it cannot a cannot store 10 and 20 at the same time because it is going to store only four bytes of memory that is integer this 10 is getting right now problem why we need array first we'll understand that right so when we found that suppose we want to suppose one college is there there are thousand students are there and their marks we have to store somewhere so we'll not create thousand you know different different variables for that student one student two student three and those marks will be stored so that will be very difficult task isn't it so for remembering for human you know to interact with that that is a very difficult task isn't it so there come arises the you know use of array so there we what we did you know we created a data structure that is going to store multiple variables so if we declare one array so declaration means what telling the compiler that we want we're going to use something that is going to be you know we use suppose here i'll write integer and this is the square bracket we use for declaration of array and we'll write array so this means what this array is of integer type and it is going to be storing multiple variables so if you here you can see six eight four three two it's storing right so that is this is what declaration it means you are telling the compiler that don't give error if i write arr as the name of the array and we are storing multiple values in it right this is the this is what it means basically all right now after that we initialize with some values that you know one two three four five suppose you are initializing it some with some values right it means you are declaring and initializing at the same time you're storing the values in the array and after that you can access with the index this is zero index one two three and all those things are there okay let's understand one thing that in array definition that arrays are stored in continuous memory allocation so it means what does that mean so when we this you will understand when we will see the difference between array and linked list so you might have heard linked list also like that is also data structure but in array what is there 
if suppose this address is 1000, this has to be 1004. This has to be 1008 and this has to be 1012 and so on. So if you see the size is getting increased by four bytes, it's also getting increased by four bytes. It's also getting increased by four bytes. It's also getting increased by four bytes, right? So why it's in getting increased by four bytes? Because this array is of integer type. And we know if you have basic understanding of variables and data types, integer, we consider integer as four bytes. We can, uh, you know, consider character to be one byte, right? So that's why it is getting increased by four bytes. So when we say it's a contiguous memory location, that means that it means you store six here. After that, you definitely have to store four, eight here. You cannot skip this position. One, zero, four, one, you know, 1004, you cannot skip this position that you want to skip this place and you want to store eight here. No, you can't do that. That's why it's a continuous memory allocation. Okay. Second thing is array index start from zero that you can already see from here. So that it's starting from zero right you can see index start is zero one two three it means if arrays you know it's of n elements are there last index is going to be n minus one index right okay all right next thing is that you know it's going to store similar type of data types so array is going to store same type of data types. what does that mean if you are storing six here you cannot store 8.1 you cannot store decimal values here, double float values here. So if you're storing six, you have to put all integers in that array. If you're storing double values, 8.1, 8.2. So yeah, you have to store all the double values. If you're storing character, you have to store all the characters. That is what the basic definition of array is. All right. So this is the, you know, basic definitions of array so in this array you could do you know various tasks isn't it you could insert element at certain position you can delete element at certain position so you could do those things so we want to see that you know how to insert and how to uh, you know do those things so there are various types of arrays are there you know sing single dimensional array so we're going to see that thing Two dimensional array is there, three dimensional array is there, and all those stuffs are there. So, in array, you know, traversals, insertion, deletion, searching, updating, sorting, merging, all these operations are there. So, we're going to learn one by one these things. So, we're going to, uh, you know, see insertion and deletion and traversal, three things. Searching, we're going to see when we're going to jump to the, you know, that uh, linear search and binary search, they will understand that, you know, searching algorithm. So let's jump to the VS code and let's do some coding now. So I came to the VS code. I'll just, you know, remove, I'll take it down here so that it is visible to you guys. Okay. So I'll come to the program and I'll create one file and I'll name that file with, you know, let's say main dot Java. So here, what is our task? We're going to see, you know, insertion in array using Java. So we're going to see insertion code in Java. So we'll understand each and everything one by one. So for that, what I have to do is I have to import, you know, that array file for that, right? So I, what I'll do is I'll write import Java and I write util dot java dot util dot arrays so we are going to store all right arrays now after that we have to define the class for that right so for that what we'll do is will define a class define a class for that so what is the name one thing you have to remember that we have named the you know program name as main.java so that class has to be you know that class name has to be main only 
otherwise it will give error so we'll because you know that java is you know a completely first thing it will be going to compile then after that is going to be used because it's a portable either you're going to use mac linux wherever so it's going to create class for that so that's why you have to take care of that thing first thing all right now here what we'll do is i'll give the access modifier so that we can use this method anywhere so i'll give public and i'll give class and i'll name that class as main function so this is either you call it method or function both are completely fine right so inside this you know means method we go to write each and everything all right so first thing what you have to do is we have to declare an array so we want to do is we're going to declare a static array we were not going to do declare static you know that dynamic array so we're going to declare a static array for that so before declaration what i'll do is i'll write here and i'll write the type i'll be giving as static you know why i'm giving static and everything i'll you know going to uh, let you know that i'll writing static and this is an array and let's give the array name as something so array name i'm giving is let's say arr and we're going to store this is we're going to initialize the value with some values let's say you know one comma two comma three comma four comma five so this is the array of size five let's say all right and at the end of the statement i'll give semicolon to end the you know that statement right so this is what you know any declaration and initialization of a static array now we're going to declare a static element also that is you know we're going to what the element we want to insert so what is our task we want to insert some element inside this array right suppose we want to insert in the third position so what is that that is the four value like right so whatever value we want to want we are going to take that variable and we're going to put it here right so what we'll write is for that we'll declare a variable and we'll declare it to be static only right so in Java, these are the some syntaxes are there. So I have taken integer and let's name the variable as element. And let's say we want to, you know, give value as we want to enter six to that some position we want to enter. So here, if you see two three things i i just want to clear you know here i use public i used you know static what are these things all right so this public is a keyword you know to access this is an access modifier basically which means that this method can be accessed from outside the class where it is defined basically so we can access this anywhere outside the class or within the class wherever we want to you know access it next thing we're going to see is static keyword right before end we have written static what does that actually mean the static keyword means that this method belong to the class itself rather than an instance of that class this means that you don't need to create an object for that class to use this method so that's why we have written the static we don't want to create the object we can this defines that this is the this method belongs to the class itself next thing we're going to use one more thing that is void what, what will be that meaning that void keyword in that means is method does not return any value suppose we want to we don't want any return from that you know method or function don't get confused when i say sometimes method or function both are the same thing so when i don't want to return anything that time i'll write void so that that is you're going to see again like you know when i'm writing that void and things so that is you also going to see that all right now what do you have to do we have declared that variable now what we'll do is we'll declare the main function basically the driver code where the coding starts like basically where the code starts reading it so here is the basically driver code so in driver code we'll be starting with the main method or main function so we'll be writing the access modifier we want to access it from anywhere that's why we'll write the access modifier as public 
Then after that, what we'll do is we'll give static again. So this from this class, you know, we are defining that this is from this method only. You can use it. All right. So I'll give static here. And after that, what I'll write is I'll give, we don't want to return anything from this mean function, mean method. So I'll write void and I'll write the mean function. So in that mean function, I'll pass a string array. Spring array and I'll write it as arguments a r j. This is the basic template you can see everywhere whenever you want to write it. Now, within the parenthesis, we want to write the logic. Now, where we want to enter the value, let's suppose we want to enter the value at third position 0, 1, 2, 3. It means the fourth value. We want to enter some value. That is value is what six. We want to enter in this position. So, what I have to write is I'll declare that variable and let's say position. So this position will do what? We'll write it three. At the third position, basically, we're going to give that value. That's why I'm writing int position equals to three. All right. Now, what I'll do is after writing this, I'll be printing before entering the value, before writing the method, what I have to do is I have to write the i have to print the original array right so I'll, what i'll do is i'll print the original array and after that i'll print the new array so what what we'll do is i'll write system dot out print ln this is the this is how we uh, do the output in java in if you do with you know c you'll be using printf you if you do using c plus plus you use being c out these are the things you use right so print ln and within the brackets i'll say and double quotes i'll write original array and original array we want to print it right so i'll write plus and I'll give arrays arrays dot to string and I'll pass the array so that will print the original array whatever the original array is what are what is our original array original array is one two three four five this is the original array so that will print the value all right original values after that what you have to do is i have to before calling this you know that method we have to write the function for that right so this is the main function from where we'll be calling the you know that insertion we have to write the that function right insertion function so we will be calling that function from here right so before calling that function what i will do is i have to define that method so that will insert the element in an array right so what i have to do is i'll come out of this i'll come out of this main function and i'll you know create that array let you know not array that function basically right i'll define that function so let's give the access modifier as to be public because we want to access from everywhere and let's give this to be static it means it defines that this is from the class mean that capital m mean right okay after writing static i'll declare the in integer type and that's array and i'll write the function as insert let's say element and insert element this is a function and we'll pass some parameters and what we'll be passing we'll be taking the value original array right so i'll be passing int here we'll be writing array we pass the array we will take the what the value we want to enter we're going to take element okay these two things we have taken next thing what i have to take is what is the position we want to enter so here basically the code you know will work this position we have taken all right now 
here we will write the logic now so what will be the logic logic is going to be that we going to suppose we want to insert element here so basically we have to shift the elements to the right side suppose we want to insert element here so let's take this you know pointer suppose i want to insert element at this fourth position so what i have to do is i have to shift the elements to the right side right then fourth to this position and i'll enter the value here right so that will do a task so what is there this is the array it's going to be there and what is stored one two three four and five these values are stored and let's say here we want to enter what is the element we want to enter six so what i have to do is i have to shift the elements to the right side so here i'll shift it five to the shift it this position and four will be shifting to the fifth position and six will be entering the value here so that is what the logic is and that is what we're going to write everything inside the you know this this method this function right okay i'll remove this i'll okay so here we have to declare everything so we'll declare array size to be you know we'll increase the array size intentionally by one okay so insert element is our function name and we have passed the array and integer all right now what you have to do is we have to create an array new array right int array and here we whatever the new array is there i'll be writing new arr let's say this is the new array where we want to you know and not give space here so this is the new array which will be giving the inserted element so in this i'll be creating dynamically so what i'll use a key i'll be using a keyword new and i'll increase the length of this array by one because it's going to be increased by size one so i'll be writing int and inside that what we'll be writing is whatever the length of the previous array at array dot length so basically it is four, five but still i'm writing arr dot length so that i don't want to get any you know don't want any error from like human error so that's why i'm writing array dot length and here what i'll be doing is i'll be increasing to size one all right so this will increase the size by one and i'll end the statement okay we have created an array that is new array now what you have to do is we have to copy the elements from the original array to the new array till the position till which position position we have entered that is to be three we have declared position right that is three so what we'll do is i'll write system dot array copy i'll write array copy and there we have to copy all the elements right so what i'll write is we'll pass the array here and from zeroth index we'll be starting we are print we are getting the array in you know new array those elements so new a r r and after that zero comma position whatever the position is there till so that position it will be it is going to be enter right after this what is going to happen we have to enter the element at the correct position so we have to enter the element in new array right new array new arr and in which index position index there we want to enter what is what you have to enter we have to enter element so we have entered the element so we have taken that position and we have entered the value in that new array right after that copy the remaining elements from the original array to the new array because till the position we have copied and after we have entered then we will copy the rest elements again so again we'll write the same thing system dot array copy and after that what we'll be writing is we'll be passing the array 
Next, we'll be writing from where you have to start now, position, not zero, because we already did that. Position and a new array, what I have to do is, we have to pass a new array and till where position plus one. If you remember, we increase the size by one because we have to enter till position plus one. So I have to write position plus one. So this, this is going to do our task. So here what I, have, what I did, I have to write is array copy. A R R A Y copy. All right. So this much is done. Now, next thing we want to focus is okay. One more thing, one ending position I have to give, right? One position plus one I have written. Then I have to write till where array dot length A R R dot length minus position this is the step i have to do because we are print you know copying the elements whatever the elements are there till that position after that what we're doing is you know position plus one and till that array of length that is five minus position five minus that is going to be three that is going to be two right so till that it's going to be printing all right now let's move forward this is what is the type of the you know method integer right so it's going to return something so we're going to return the new array from here so what we'll do is we're going to return because we have we have to return the some value right we're going to return new array basically so new array we are returning and this is going to go to where this is go going to go to the mean function this is going to go to the main function right all right we already printed the original array if you remember here we after this we have to call this insert element method so if after calling it will return this new array and we'll get the new array there right so here what we'll do is i'll create int new ARR, this is the name we know, we'll be storing this in this and we'll call that function. This insert elements, I'll copy this name so that no error comes. So I'll copy it, I'll paste it. So what is the parameter we are taking? One array element and position. So what what, what is going to pass here? We're going to pass what arguments? Array, ARR, we're going to pass element, and we're going to pass position. Okay, one thing I want to clear. That is here, when I'm taking, I'm taking this is as, you know, argument. And here I'm saying this is as, you know, parameter. Why? What is the difference between argument and parameter? Arguments are the basically the values that is we are passing. And parameters, when you say those are the variables. So here you can see element is six, it is getting passed. And when I say position, it is getting three. These are the values we are passing. So whenever we are passing values, that is what that means. It's a argument. Whenever we are passing the variables directly, that is what parameter is. So we are storing this in new array. We are calling this function. So that is new array is going to be stored here right now after this what i have to do is i have to print the new array again so for that printing what i'll do is i'll have to write the same thing array dot to string and new array so for that what i'll do is i'll copy this you know statement and i'll come it here and i'll paste it and instead of original array i'll be writing new array and arrays dot strings here i'll be calling you know new i'll be passing what new array now this is all about our code right this is you know we have we have 
initialize one uh, array then we have to what element we have to enter six which position we want to three this is printing the original array then we are calling this function where we are print you know copying the first element still you know three then we are entering four and after that whatever the elements are there we are copying those elements this is what we are using right i'll hit control s here and i'll right click here and i'll try to run the code so when we run the code I'll try to take panel position to the you know right side so that it will be very visible. Okay, but what I'll do is I'll write clear here and I'll click here and I'll create run Java. I'll run the code. Okay, so you see here the output came. Original array is one, two, three, four, five. Because you can see from the code here, this is the original array. Now we want to enter the elements at position three. Position three was what? Zero, one, two, three. It means at the fourth position, it will be six. And after that, four and five will be coming. So in the new array, you can see these things. So this is what insertion in an array. All right. Similarly, deletion methods are also there like suppose you want to delete suppose you have taken some array and you want to delete it so they, that is also there you know how to delete element in an array so if you have any doubt you can write it in the chat so i may not right now i may not you know see all the chats right now but you know we'll give you know one to one thing like when you join our you know program so there we give you know here we have to complete the thing so what are you going to start so that is we are just writing it all right so this is all about insertion i'll just try to see the you know chat okay great great so we'll try to take these questions you know uh because we have very less time we have to teach lots of things uh i i thought of taking you know deletion then binary search linear search uh so that will take lots of lots of time so if i just you know go through the thing everything will take lots of time so i try to complete so what i'll do is you'll try to do the deletion all right so you will try to deletion. Okay, one thing I I will show you. What I said that here we are using main right main dot Java right, and we have created the main function here. If I change the name to suppose let's say my name is Amit, so I'll change the class name to be Amit, and I hit Control S. All right, now I you know click the run, try to run the code. It is giving error because it will give error because it need to be creating the class main dot class that's why i have to write the you have to remember that that thing that whenever you create a class that has to be same name as this right so here i have to take care of this thing so i have to write main here all right i'll hit control s so this will do our task so this is what you know insertion in an array so we'll try to you'll try with the deletion code i'll try to take the linear search and binary search if possible you know i thought of taking you know stacks linear search binary lots of things there you know i thought of taking uh selection sort also sorting algorithms we'll see but i i see you know time is already you know 419 so we have to we have till maybe you know 20 30 minutes left uh, for that you know i'll try to cover linear search right so you'll understand what does linear search means i'll try to teach you what is linear search how does google work in searching so you'll understand that thing also okay so for that i'll create you know one file name that is linear search dot 
Java. Java is the extension we use for linear search. Okay. So if we already see it is creating the you know class name linear search that has to be otherwise it will give error. So it's already created public class linear search. It's fine. So what what do we want to do in this linear search? Suppose suppose basically an array is going to be there. One array is going to be there and some values are there. So let's say this is the memory for Google and Google storing some at you know um, lots of websites right one website two website three four five six seven until billions of websites maybe whatever now you search something you go to google you search dsa now google will go to its database and will try to match this keyword with this sites with the sites billions are there right now you search google uh, in the dsa and you see results are coming within 0 0.1 seconds and they have huge number of websites still they are giving it in very fast result right how it's possible because of data structure and algorithm that we already talked about all right now when we search dsa that has to say whether that in the da database dsa is there or not suppose i search j k l m o p q if i search this some big keyword and that is not there in the google that will say that it is not there or it will try to give the similar looking like this like it, it may consider that this is a coupon code or something or whatever and suppose i write any extra number of you know letters so that time google show that is this is not present so that is what we're going to see right now if it is present or not so that in by linear search linear search is also called a sequential search it means one by one we're going to you know search that array so for numbers we're going to see so one by one we're going to search and we're going to see that what is what other things are there right so for that what 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 are the things we have to do we have to declare the main function so that is a driver code right so what i'm writing is public the access modifier we want to access from in uh, everywhere so i'll write the public i'll give it a static that uh, you know class to be ma main function to be you know static all right and i'll write it will return nothing so it, i'll write void and i'll write the main function main and i'll pass the spring array string array and a r g s so this is the basic template we have created now what i have to do we want to find that whatever array we are declaring and we want to search something that is there or not that is what we want to do right so for that we'll create a linear search uh, function there we're going to write the logic before that we'll you know set up the things that if it is there or not right so for that we'll declare one array so int i'll declare on one array int that's of that's uh, array is of integer type and array name is ar let's say and we'll, let's say we'll initialize with some values 67 34 uh, 56 90 you know or let's say let's take it very you know simple like let's say 10 20 30 40 and 50 let's say these are the elements five elements we have taken in that array and we want to search something that that element is there or not all right so what i have to do is we have to define a key so i'll declare one variable and i'll initialize with let's say we want to find if 30 is there or not we want to search in that array if 30 is there or not we can find that 30 is already there right so what we'll do is it will will print in that thing that it will say element found in that array and if it is not found it will not say that element is not found right and it will give the index okay so basically we want to do that thing so now here 
we will call the linear search function before that calling linear search function will be storing it in some variable let's say we are storing it in index variable and here we'll be calling we'll be creating one function that is going to be linear search and in that function what do you want to write let's create linear search and here what we're going to do is we're going to pass the so two argument we are passing array and key so basically we're going to see these are there or not right so when we call and when you print the results so that either you know that index is now it is going to print uh, that element is not found or element is found right so that is what it's going to print so for that it's it's a if else statement isn't it so if it's a if else statement so i'll write if statement and in this if statement, what I'll write is if index is equals to minus one, that time we'll say that I'll write system dot print ln and everything. System dot out dot print ln. I'll show you some shortcut to you writing this right now. I'm writing full thing so that you, you know, practice to it. That's why I'll show you shortcut also. That is completely fine. I'm not trying to write it right now. Okay. So here we'll say element not found. So is it possible anytime that index is going to be minus one? array index starts from zero it can we never be minus one it means this execution is going to happen right so what it means is when it if it is not found so it will say you know never it will match to it so it will say not found otherwise in the else it is going to write that thing right so we are writing in that way so in the else what we'll be writing is Okay, if I write sys out, you can see directly it is writing. So what, what is the, you know, short form of it? So I, if I don't have to write system.out.println, so I'll write sys out and I'll tab and hit the, you know, that thing and it will be getting me the, you know, right, writing the whole thing. So here what I'll say is element element found at index and what is that index we also print it so i'll give plus and that is that index that is index is that variable right we are storing it so it will print that okay now this is the calling of that function right so what we'll do is till here main function is here now we have to define the method that linear search is linear search is going to be searching one by one we're going to this is a very costly method we don't use it like it will take lots of time it will take you know this is not very feasible this linear search so that's why there, there comes a binary search right so here what we'll do for this right now we'll create linear search function linear search method right so i'll give access modified to be public because we want to access from anywhere that's why we're going to give static so you know we're going to access it from here that's why we're writing it and we're going to write you know it's data type is going to give giving the linear search uh function data type is going to give integer it means we're going to return something all right and what you want to write is we're going to write the function name so function name is linear search and in that what we are passing we are passing array and key if you remember from above here in the line number five here we pass the array and key so here i'll pass int array and after passing the array we'll pass the key int key so these are the parameters if you remember what i said parameters and difference between parameters and argument parameters are those which are variables and argument are those which are you know actual values so 
in this line these are arguments because array we are passing this array 10 20 30 key we are passing 30 the actual values we are passing to it all right now here this is the linear search function so what i have to do we'll loop through the uh, you know whole array and we'll compare one by one to the key if we found we'll return if we don't find we'll we'll say no return minus one basically we're going to do that right so for that what i'll write is one for loop so inside that for loop what we'll do is i'll start from int i equals to zero and i is going to be less than array dot length right now what is the length of our array length of our array is that is five right so it is going to write five actually all right now after that i have to update it also so i have updated it next thing what i have to do is i have to compare each elements with the key each elements of the array with the key i'll compare 30 with 10 if it is equal or not no it's not equal then move forward 30 is equal to 20 no it's not so to move forward 30 is equal to 30 yes it means we found this element right so we're going to compare how to compare we'll write the if statement and in that if statement i'll write the array of i if array of i is equals to key this is checking one by one this is not recommended by the way this is very costly process here what we'll say here we'll say return i it means we are returning the basically which index right it is going to i'll say the flow of code also all right return i okay now this is the end this is going to be the end of for loop now if we don't find it if we don't find the thing so what we'll say return minus one because if you remember if you return minus one it will say element not found so here we'll write return minus one this is all about just right now i'm going to do what and just walk through the code let's walk through the code so this is what this is the whole module of it all right name is linear search so we have written the linear search or java okay one thing now this is the main function and this is the whatever the logic we're going to write this is that function basically this is the linear search function this is linear search function and this is main function this is basically also called as you know driver code also all right so here what we did we have taken an array we have taken the key and we have this is calling a function okay i'll tell you one thing that let me clear it out so what is happening basically what is running from here this line is executed this line executed this line executed now this is calling a function this line line number five is calling of linear search function so from here code will jump to this function it will try to find it so it will jump to the line number 14. six line number will not be executed until unless this code is done with execution all right so here we are calling the function and storing the value in the index if you see we are calling this is calling a function this one is calling a function and we are storing an index right after calling a function this is going to come here key is going to take from here and it is going to check how key and array is going to coming we are giving the parameter here all right so it is going to check if it is finding that element it is going to return i it means return index so it will come back here and it will print element from found and index will be printed and it is not found it will come back here again after line number 22 it will come back to six line number and this is how it's going to be done so what is happening basically is code going from line number is code going from line number five to line number six no from line number five it is jumping to line number 14 because that is calling a function from here five it is coming to line number 14 jumping a function is happening right and though whatever the value it is returning that is stored in the index 
here we are returning right here we are returning index here we are returning minus one so that is getting stored in the index and that index after this execution of this whole code it will return something either minus one or that index it will come back from here it will come back to this if statement and else statement and it will print accordingly whatever is going to be printed so let's run this code first so what i'll do is i'll right click here before right clicking i'll save the code i'll hit control i'll click here first i'll click here i'll hit control s okay the hot dot gone now what i'll do is i'll right click here and i'll run the code okay it is saying that element found at index 2 and that is true also because we are searching 30 right we are searching 30 30 is at position this is our array this is our array 10 20 30 40 and 50 is present this is zero index one two three four we are finding 30 and that is giving index it's two so it is finding let's change the value you know let's change value from 30 to let's say you know 50 and i'll hit control s i'll click here i'll clear it the terminal first and i'll click here to run the code after running the code i search 50 right so it is giving element found at index 4 and that is true also 50 that's four position let's change the value to something that is not there let's say 45 45 is not here i'll hit control s i'll click the code here and if you see element is not found it is printing right so this is what linear search and this is what you know searching whatever the searching things you do this is how it is done so this is not efficient though this because if the array element has billion numbers also it will compare try to compare each and everything one by one so that is a costlier process so that is not recommended that's why we use you know binary search so in binary search what we do basically we divide we'll name the starting point ending point we'll divide the array into two parts then we'll try to find if it is there in the right side or in the left side then we'll divide again that into two parts and that way it will improve our complexity of code that is time complexity and space complexity will be improved by that code this is what you know this linear search is all right i'll remove this similarly you can uh, you know do with the binary search sorting is there in sorting what will happen right now it is already sorted so in sorting what will happen different elements will be there and those will be getting sorted whenever you write the program one thing to remember that if you see whatever the way i'm writing that i'm creating functions different different functions then i'm calling and then storing so this is the good practice right always create function whenever you write you know some code right always try to use different function try to create different module of the code is getting very bigger then take different you know another uh, class for that and all the stuff you can do it all right now let's jump to there the ppt so traversals means what that printing that for loop we did that is what traversals is insertion we saw deletion is going to be same thing you can try, try it update is same thing is going to happen and search we already saw sorting we didn't saw because we we are not left with that much of time but you know these are the operations there so i'll i'll try to you know go forward you know what is the usage of uh, array and other things are there you know so you know lots it's going to as i already said that array is going to store multiple variables you know same types and it is going to solve lots of lots of problems and it is was cpu scheduling and all those stuff so let's go one by one like whatever the topics are that i'll take you know talk about few things about those okay all right now array was there but what is the need of linked list so it's if array data structure was already there then what is the use of linked list 
you can access the element in array in O of time, that O of one time, right? We already saw that in constant time. But if you want to insert element in an array, that is very a costly process. You can understand, right? How costly that is because if there are, let's suppose, one billion num numbers are there, and you want to enter at the you know second last element, so it will iterate all that will check for the all the elements after that that will enter. So if you want to enter at the first position, you have to shift it to the right side every time. So th not this one linear search. Th I'm talking about this, right? What I'm talking right now is then why we needed like why we need linked list that's why i'm talking about so here if you see suppose this is an array suppose this is an array and it has in not infinite 1 billion numbers are there let's say and suppose 1 2 3 4 5 and so on numbers are there all right now suppose you want to insert at the element at the very first position so what do you have to do from the last position you have to shift one element to the right side so that's a very, very difficult task, isn't it, for an array. So that's why we use linked list. So linked list, like here we know that all memory are continuous. Continuous memory location is there. It means one after one. It, you cannot skip any memory address. If it is 110, 1000, this has to be 1004. That has to be 1008. And you cannot leave any like empty, right? But in linked list, what happens is wherever we get memory, we just link it. Wherever we get memory, we link it. Wherever we get free space, we link it. Here we get free space, we link it. So insertion and deletion in and linked list with O of one complexity. So that's very fast. But insertion and deletion in a array, it's very, very difficult, right? That's O of n. Like that many times it has to iterate, right? So that is a, you know, that we don't want. That's why we you know, introduce a linked list because we want the code to be very fast, efficient, right? But to access any element in an array is very fast because what we'll do to access the element, we'll write the array name, we'll pass the index directly. Suppose we want to access element at three, we'll directly pass it and we'll get the element, whatever the element is. But in linked list, that is very difficult. That is O of 1 complexity. So when we want to access element in array, that is O of 1. But we want to access element in linked list, that is O of n. So that, that is going, you know, some advantages of array is there. Some advantages of linked list is there. So th this is all about, that's why we needed, you know, linked list. All right. And when we talk about linked list, I'll, I'll try to take, you know, a few... Uh, real life examples so you might have seen your in a mobile phone that contact list is there right that different contact list is there so you might have used spotify also all the songs are there in queue and all those stuff so those are implemented using linked list so those projects we go to see in this you know whole course so creating real life projects no like creating projects with data structure that is a very you know commendable thing right so you're not creating any something sub you're not using api or libraries and you are saying that i can detect face and all this stuff we don't want those fluffy you know things we want to do something that is valuable that we can do right so creating projects with data structures that's a you know huge thing so yeah if you do and if you connect with javascript and all stuff so that will create a huge project so you will try to create you know how to do the you know that spotify thing uh, you know how to create contact list and all those stuff. so those are the uses of linked list right so here is the concept of node comes in right here also traversal insertion deletion search sort everything we see all right in the linked list so Linked list, what is the advantage is memory consumption is, you know, in the linked list, it's a non-continuous, like uh, it's not like array, you know, it's time size is dynamic. It means it can change in the runtime, but if array is static, you cannot change the size in the runtime, right? Insertion, deletion, uh, in and you see here, you see that insertion and deletion is very fast. It's in O of time it do, you know, you know, disadvantage is it's more difficult to traverse than, you know, array that we already saw right so type of linked list is there singly linked list doubly linked list circular linked list today we cannot cover all these things because these are huge topics 
like lots of you know manuals are there you know all the cms everything is there we cover everything each and everything first we explain one by one then we uh, take examples then we do projects so that holds us you know very you know good so that that is what we uh, you know we we do right so what is stack again this is stack is a data structure so either you can implement stack using array you can implement stack using you know linked list similarly q is there so this is a data structure which is going to use you know last in first out uh, order you know so these things are there like stacking things and all those stuffs are there so these are the you know various things push pop operation is empty is full uh, you know peak function and everything each and everything is there so similarly q data structure is there you can get these things lots of lots of things are there so we'll try to you know i'll try to hand over to silent sir and he will be talking about next Shalindar, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Amit, for for your wonderful session. So, guys, here I understand few people are here having the much more expectation from the session, but of course we have been a limited time, and it's not the case the DSA we can cover only in two hours. So the the idea behind to start the thing is at least few data structure you should know you should understand well so that when it is coming to the implementation you able to implement them well so that's why mainly uh, we focused here on the array because array is a commonly used data structure for doing the many things even for solving the many problems when it is coming to the dsa problems there We will schedule the more session in upcoming weekend around the DSA itself. It's not the case. Uh, the same thing we will repeat in the next session. The next session we will come up with more advanced data structure implementation. So we'll have the learning for another data structure as well. So if you have any query, any doubt regarding this, please do ask. Amit sir is here. They will answer you the things. In between, many people ask about what can be the roadmap for learning the DSA. That oh. I'm sharing with you the roadmap for learning the DSA, so that you having the clarity about it. What are the various topic you have to focus? So first thing here, you need to know one of the programming language like. C++, Java, Python, C Sharp, even JavaScript also you can use. Many people use JavaScript. So depending upon what is your language experience you have, you can pick one of the programming language. This is the first prerequisite. After that, of course, you need to know the various data structure. But before that, you have to look at about the big O notation. So inside the big O notation, we talk about the are uh, the time complexity and the space complexity. This is the even the topic that is going to discuss a lot in the interview, in the all the problems you are going to solve around the DSA. So make sure you know well how to calculate the time complexity. Even in the beginning of the session, we discuss about how we can calculate the time complexity of a for loop program, of a nested for loop program, and then another one. And of course, you, you should explore the various data structure, let's say arrays and a string, linked list, stack and queue, trees, where we having binary tree, ABL tree, heaps and tries, graphs, greedy algorithms, backtracking and hashing. So these are the various data structure. And the most important things about the data structure is you need to know how to solve the problem. Because data structure is all about your approach to look at the problem, your approach to solve it. Even in the interview as well, they always look at how you are attempting the solution of a problem, what are the approach you are taking over there. To solve a particular problem, we can have many solutions. So ultimately, we have to find out the optimal solution to solve that particular problem. So always when it is coming to the DSA, it's all about giving an optimal solution of a particular problem 
it's not about only solving the problem because for solving the problem we can have many techniques we can have many ways but every solution is not optimal so always you have to look at the optimal solution so that optimal solution you will understand by looking at the various approaches to solve a problem so i hope you have the now understanding what are the things you have to prepare around the dsa if you have any query please do let me know here so around this do you have any query so i see one question uh, asked by i think alok kumar how we can achieve okay i have used that inbuilt because you, you have to what you have to use is original array was there so you will declare one more you know array that is dynamically will create and in for loop you will just copy it that is the thing that is the thing you can do either you use directly i didn't use because i i want to keep it you know that logic to be very precise and so that that can be visible that's why i use that inbuilt function Ad, uh, otherwise you can if you want to increase the you know like uh, three four lines you can do that that's completely fine so any other query guys do you have okay now few things i need to showcase here so if you're looking for a joining a product based company so if you're looking at the product based company as de job so these are some numbers i just took from the the portal at indeed.com and we have been the other payskill.com so there they have mentioned some salary available as an sde these are the starting salary especially for the fresher or sd in google amazon uber facebook linkedin and others and it's not about they are looking into you should be good in the dsa of course dsa is a first step to get a role inside these big mncs but after that you have to work over there one of the stack it can be the stack for javascript it can be the stack let's say for machine learning and ai it can be the stack for some other purpose so that particular stack you must know so it's not about you are focusing only on dsa the suggestion is here about learn other things as well let's say learn the front end element learn the full stack element as well because these things will help you to survive later on because what happens here whenever you are joining a company let's say google amazon and uber they are going to take your assessment in that assessment they will test your skill your understanding on a particular technology let's say mostly they prefer the javascript everywhere nowadays so make sure the javascript you know well how it is working you should know what are the various things we have been over there those things also need to know there then we have been here few training program so if you are looking for a end to end training where we are teaching the dsa where we have been the training program on full stack where we are covering the mern stack we where we are covering the dot net we have been the program around the cloud as well so these are the various program we are offering if somebody is interested to join this program i will share a link there you can share your detail for that registration and you can one of the team member we will one of the team member will call from there so the benefit what we are offering here we are offering the unlimited live training option which you can join till one year like a number of batches you can join around a particular training we will provide you the videos as well and here you are going to learn by doing the practice because we have been the many hands on labs we have been the many problems which you have to solve so that you will have the understanding around that and of course in each training we are doing some projects so that you will have the complete real world understanding how to work on the in the real life on a project when you are going to be work in a company so that is a necessary part of course to crack the interview in a company you need to know the interview question answer you need to know how to draft the resume 
need to know many of these things. So those things also we are offering here simply. So do you have any query so far regarding this one? I'm sharing the link. If you're interested to join any trading program, you can fill up the this Google form and share your detail. One more question I see, sir, uh, from Ganesh that he asked that linear uh, link list is a linear type or non-linear. Okay, I already told that linear uh, link list is a linear data structure. If linear, then what about W link list? Okay. So you're talking in W link list, you may know that two pointers are there, right? So W link list is also a linear data structure only. Despite the bi bidirectional, you know, traversal ability, a W linked W link list is still considered to be linear data structure because elements are arranged in sequential order and elements can be accessed and processed by in linear order only. Right in non-linear, you know already that multiple nodes are connected. Either it will be hierarchical, either you can follow any path. But uh, in uh, W linked list also that cover only linear path only. That's why it's a linear data structure. Being you know it has two pointers. Still you know it is a linear data structure only. Ganesh. I hope you got the answer of your queries, whatever you having. If you have any other query, you can ask. We will try to answer those things. And we will schedule a few more master classes around the DSA so that you will learn some advanced data structure as well. So today's session was at the basic level, but in the next session, we will cover the some advanced data structure. Make sense to everyone? Manoranjan is coming to .NET and .NET. You can join my Friday session there. I will tell you today's session. I want to stick with the DSA. So I'm not changing the topic here. Okay. Someday when we will do the webinar and master class on .NET there, I will take your question definitely. I hope everyone done. Uh, do you have any other query? I already shared the Google form link even you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm sharing the YouTube channel link as well. There you can subscribe. There's a link. And there we are sharing the many videos around the various technologies. Definitely. I'm sure it, they will help you. Yeah, when we schedule the next master class, we will inform. Don't worry about that. Keep following on YouTube, you will get the information. Okay, thank you, Amit sir, for your wonderful session. Sure, sir, sure. Thank you all for listening, guys. Uh, we'll definitely do you know advanced topics because today was the very new. So I, you know, it, like two hours is very less, as you guys know. Data structure, lots of data structures there. So in two hours, it's not possible to complete arrays. Then you know you have seen that, right? So not only we're going to see, we're going to see lots of, you know, cool stuff in linked list, also trees, graphs, everything we're going to see, no issues. As time passes, we'll start, we'll schedule a lot more master classes. They will study lots of things. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you all.